Baseball may just be a sport, but one baseball player may have helped save the world. Mo Berg was an accomplished baseball player for 15 years in the 30s and 40s, but he was also a spy in World War II. Before the CIA, there was an organization called the OSS, and Mo Berg was its star. His life is the focus of a new documentary called The Spy Behind Home Plate. And recently, I asked filmmaker Aviva Kempner if Mo Berg was the real-life James Bond. He was in the OSS, and what people don't know, but will be is in the film that the creator of James Bond, Ian Fleming, actually helped while Bill Donovan developed the whole plan for the OSS. It's a couple scenes in the movie. So the whole aspect of the OSS that would put men and women in safe crackers, Ivy League people, and someone with brain and brawn like Mo Berg, also created in the input by Ian Fleming, who created James Bond. The OSS, by the way, was the precursor to the CIA, and we didn't have a spy system back then, so Mo Berg was, was kind of like something unique. He spoke 10 languages, he had a law degree, charismatic, a baseball player, a perfect cover to travel the world, and he did just that promoting baseball alongside some of the greats like Babe Ruth. Well, you know, the joke was he spoke 10, maybe 12 languages, but couldn't hit in any of them. <laughs> but actually, in the 15 years he played, he hit 243, which is a pretty good utility player. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about Babe Ruth, in 1934, there was a very famous trip of an all-star team, except for Mo, he was an all-star, but it was Babe Ruth, Jimmy Fox, Lefty Gomez, Lou Gehrig, Charlie Gehringer, all went to Tokyo under the guise of a goodwill trip. But I think it was really America's last chance to sort of reach out to Japan. And when Mo was there, he did a certain clandestine filming of the Tokyo skyline on, I think, his own volition. But you have to see the film to see if he didn't think he had maybe some others encouraging him to do it. And this was footage used later in the Doolittle Raid. And so that footage was used by the U.S. military at some point. Well, to scope out, you know, exactly what the skylight, skyline looked like. And they also asked for footage because Lefty Gomez and Jimmy Fox were also taking footage. So uh, the trip may, in a way, help prepare for that. Well, that's the thing is I think that there are a lot of baseball Hall of Famers that have were rightly credited with their contributions to World War II. But I would say that Mo Berg's contributions, as clandestine as they were, may have been as, if not more, impactful. Well, his role was as a, a spy for nuclear espionage. We were terrified. America was terrified in the Allies. The Germans had the capability to also create a nuclear bomb. We already had started the Manhattan Project, but we didn't know this outstanding physicist who would have had the brains and knowledge to do it, named Heisenberg, Mo was sent on this a clandestine mission to go hear him talk to see and also talk to him after uh, his lecture to see if there was any way the Germans were creating the nuclear bomb because you know it was a race until the end although the final irony was that the German physicists who knew most about how to create a bomb were Jewish and already, like Einstein, already had left Germany. But we still didn't know for sure. And Mo was the one that, that really secured the knowledge and, you know, sort of did the spying to find out what Heisenberg knew, knew by going to Zurich, pretending he was uh, a Swiss student and he had a cyanide in one pocket and a gun in another pocket. Werner Heisenberg, uh, the pioneer of quantum mechanics, right. might have been one of the few men in the world that could have taken that fission technology and created a, an atomic bomb. And it was really up to Mo to determine whether or not that was possible. So you had to get in there, pretend to be someone else, be able to speak another language, and have the knowledge to identify the charts as whether or not he was telling the truth, whether or not the Germans were even close to an right. A-bomb. And he had briefed himself. I mean, he had the type of brain who could absorb everything from physics to Sanskrit. So he, he was exactly the right person at the right time for us to use. You tell stories that are the untold stories, more or less, of Jewish heroes right. and their contribution to history. Why did Moberg's story 
gather your attention as, as great as it did? Well, I grew up in Detroit always hearing about Hank Greenberg. He was my father's hero. And the day I, uh, and hearing about how he almost broke Babe Ruth's record and didn't play baseball in Yom Kippur. And the day Hank died, I knew I had to do the film on Hank Greenberg. Mo presented itself another way. Uh, someone who had been a minor funder of my other films said to me one day, Aviva, do a film about Sid Luckman, who was the Jewish football player. And I said, Bill, I don't like football. And he says, what about Barney Ross? And I said, uh, I, I hate boxing more, a Jewish boxer. But when he said, Mo Berg, I love baseball. And I said, I've got to do it. Here we combine, you know, again, the golden age of baseball, which I'm fixated on. Uh, someone who used his cleverness and his wit and also his knowledge of languages to spy on the Germans. And I don't think people know enough about the Manhattan Project because it was so secret, but sort of the spies that went along with it. And it's just great to be able to tell the story of Mo Berg, who sacrificed not only his life, but also his professional baseball coaching career to go off and spy for us. Sounds like a great story until you actually have to go in there and do the research. And now you're talking about someone that passed away 50 years ago, didn't leave any children behind. In the 30s and 40s, any kind of documentation for his would have been burned up, erased, eliminated. And on top of that, he was literally a spy. So how do you do the research? How difficult was it to research this? Well, I benefited from three things. One is the fact that 30 years ago, two filmmakers, Neil Goldstein and Jerry Feldman, were trying to make a film on Mo and film people like Dom DiMaggio, people Mo played with, and like William Colby, people who were in the OSS or spied with him. And I was able to process those, those interviews and use them in the film. Second of all, the OSS documents have been declassified, so they're more accessible. But third of all, even though Mo didn't marry his siblings, um, kept a lot of his documents and between the Columbia Law Library, Princeton Library, New York Public Library, Cooperstown, his cousin Erwin Berg, I assure you there's a lot more pictures in libraries. Um, there's so many scenes in the film that show him at different times, not so much talking, but him in certain places. And he's always sort of like the chameleon in the back. Huh. And uh, I think that's a lot what Mo was. He was sort of observing the scene and then figuring out what could be done cleverly to get to the next step. And this was a time when anti-Semitism was rampant. He was one of the first Jewish people to actually uh, uh, participate in an Ivy League school, as a matter of fact. Um, but his... that's actually where he faced the anti-Semitism. At Princeton, there was this whole thing about Jews were called Hebrews, couldn't uh, participate in the dining clubs. Although since he was a star in the f baseball team, they did let him be there, but they wouldn't let others there. In a way, Mo did not face the anti-Semitism that I saw evident in making the Hank Greenberg film, because every time Hank went up to bat, there was someone on the opposing team or in the stands yelling at him. But still, Mo had a very restrictive time at Princeton because he was Jewish. Do you think that his motives were driven by his love for his heritage or his love for his country? I think Mo was... Um, I think Mo's motive to spy for the U.S. was both based on the fact of what he knew Nazism was about and how especially it affected his people, but most of all, it was because he was a proud American. He was the son of immigrants. And by the way, we talk about immigrants should be let in this country. Do you know who made the best spies during World War II for us? The ones who knew the languages of Europe. Of course. Or, of course, Asia. The ones who knew the customs, the clothing. You know, I, I just... Real, I realized in making this film how important immigrants are to, God forbid, you know, right now we worry about the nuclear mm. power of North, North Korea, of the Middle East, of, of Russia. Who are the spies now? Well, the, uh, the documentary is called The Spy Behind Home Plate. Uh, filmmaker Aviva Kempner, thank you so much for coming in and sharing it with us. And it's open now in the greater New York area as of this weekend. And if you want to find out where else in the country it is, you can go to spybehindhomeplate.org. Outstanding. Look forward to seeing this. Thank you so much for your time.